Questions A. Given functions g maps x to 3x plus c, where c is a constant. If gx maps 2 onto itself, finds the value of c. So in these questions, this is the keyword. So here using the arrow diagram, the meaning maps onto itself is the output of the functions is the same as the input. So let's say the input is x, then the output will be x as well. In these questions, the input is the number 2. Therefore, the output will be number 2 as well. So here we can write this as g bracket 2 is equal to 2. So here, the x here, we're going to replace it with 2. So 3 bracket 2 plus c is equal to 2. So 6 plus c equal to 2, then c is equal to 2 minus 6, which is equal to negative 4. Questions B. Diagram 1 shows function P maps set A onto set B and function Q maps set B onto set C. Find in terms of X the functions number 1 that maps set B onto set A. Before that, based on the arrow diagram given, we know that the function P, this is equal to 3x minus 3. The functions that map set A to set C is going to be the composite functions. To write the name of the composite functions, we're going to start with the second functions, then followed by the first. So the name of this composite function will be QP. So back to questions number one. The functions that maps set B onto set A is going to be the inverse functions of P as it is in the opposite directions of P. So first we're going to let the functions P of X, this is equal to Y. Then the inverse functions of P of Y, this is going to be equal to X. So start with this. So substitute the PX with 3X minus 3, this is equal to Y. To find the inverse functions, we're going to let the x to become the subject of the equations. So 3x equal to y plus 3. Then x equal to y plus 3 over 3. So now we can substitute the x with this. Next, we're going to replace the y with x. Then the inverse function will be x plus 3 over 3. Question number two, we're going to find the functions Q. So here the composite functions QP is formed when we substitute the functions P into the functions Q. So to find the outer functions when you are given the inner one, then we're going to substitute the inverse functions of the inner one, which is the inverse function of P, into the composite functions QP. So here we're to substitute the x plus 3 over 3 into the x here of the composite functions. So first, we're going to expand this. So after the expansions for the number 9 here, we can simplify this. As for this part, the number 3 and the number 6, we can also simplify this. Expand this, we're going to get minus 2x minus 6 plus 2. Then next, we're going to get x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 2x minus 4. Next, x squared, 6x minus 2x, we're going to get positive 4x. And as for 9 minus 4, we're going to get plus 5. And that will be the functions q. Diagram 8 shows the graph of the functions f of x equal to the modulus of m plus 2x for the domain x in between 0 to 6. Finds a the value of m and of n. The v-shaped graph here indicates this function f is a linear function. So if we look at the function f of x without the modular signs, it's going to be m plus 2x. So if we arrange this, 2x plus m and we compare with y equal to mx plus c. Then the number 2 here is 
going to be the gradient and the m is going to be the y-intercept. So this part of the V-shaped graph is the one with the gradient of positive. So if you extend this part, this will be the original graph of y equal to fx without the modulus. So with the modular signs, the negative part of the graph, which is below the x-axis, is going to be reflected in the x-axis and become this part. Therefore, the original value of the y-intercept is going to be negative 4. Therefore, the value m is equal to negative 4. So now, as we know what is the value of m, then the function f of x, this is equal to the modulus of negative 4 plus 2x. Next, we're going to find the value of n. n lies on the x-axis. Therefore, the coordinates of n will be n0. So here, if we input the value of n into the function f, then the answer is going to be equal to 0. So now we can replace the f of n with modulus negative 4 plus 2n equal to 0. As the answer is 0, so when we remove the modular signs, the answer for the negative 4 plus 2n will still equal to 0. So 2n is equal to positive 4, n is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is equal to 2. Questions B. Finds the range of the functions. So here x is the domain. Then the range is referred to the fx. So based on the v-shaped graph here, this is the lowest point and this is the highest point. So the value in between the lowest point and the highest point of the fx here is going to be the range. So we know that the lowest point is equal to 0, but the highest point, we haven't known its value yet. So to find the highest point, we're going to input number 6 into the function f. So f of 6, this is equal to modular signs negative 4 plus 2 times 6. This is equal to negative 4 plus 12, which is equal to 8. So the answer is positive 8. As range is referred to the fx, then the range of the functions will be the f of x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 8. Question C. Finds the value of x if f of x is greater than or equal to 2. Using number lines, the absolute value inequalities of negative 4 plus 2x greater than or equal to 2 means the distance of x from the origin 0 is more than 2. Then the solutions for this inequalities will be negative 4 plus 2x for this part it will be less than or equal to negative 2 or for this part it will be greater than or equal to 2. So here 2x is less than or equal to negative 2 plus 4. 2x is less than or equal to positive 2, then x is less than or equal to 2 divided by 2, which is 1. And for the other part, 2x is greater than or equal to 2 plus 4, then x is greater than or equal to 6 divided by 2, which is x greater than or equal to 3. So based on the V-shaped graph here, this will be fx equal to 2. So for the part fx greater than equal to 2 will be this. So based on the solution that we get, so here will be the number 1 and here will be the number 3. So when the value of x is greater than or equal to 3, then the value of f of x will be greater than or equal to 2. Or when the x is less than or equal to 1, the value of f of x will also greater than or equal to 2. A. 
Diagram 2 shows the functions of M that maps set A to set B, whereas the functions of N, which is represented by x squared minus 2, map set B to set C. Given that P is an expression in terms of x, 1 finds the value of t if the inverse M of t plus 2 equal to M of negative 2. So first, based on the arrow diagram here, we know that the function m is equal to x plus 5. And from the information in the questions, the function n will equal to x squared minus 2. So for questions number 1, first we're going to find the inverse functions of m. So first, I'm going to let the function m of x, this is equal to y, then the inverse functions m of y will equal to x. Start from this part, the x plus 5 will equal to y. To find the inverse, we're going to let the x to become the subject. Then x is equal to y minus 5. Then next, I can replace the x here with this. Then the inverse m of x will equal to x minus 5. So this t plus 2 is the input of the inverse functions. So on the left hand side, we're going to get t plus 2 minus 5. This is equal to, we're going to input negative 2 into the functions m which is equal to negative 2 plus 5. So t minus 3, this is equal to 3. So t is equal to 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. Questions number 2. State the expressions of p. So based on the arrow diagram here, the functions p has gone through two functions, which is function m and n. Therefore, the function p is a composite function. So to write the name of the composite function is always start with the second functions, then followed by the first. In this case, it's going to be n, m. So to find the composite functions of n, m, we're going to substitute the functions n into the function n. So we're going to insert, substitute the x plus 5 into the x here. So this is equal to bracket x plus 5 square minus 2. Expand this, x square plus 10x plus 25 minus 2. So x square plus 10x plus 23 will be the expressions of P. Questions B, given that functions k equal to P over x minus 2 such that P is a constant. Number one, find function g in terms of p given that composite function gk is equal to 5x minus 8 over x minus 2. So the composite function gk is formed when we substitute the functions k into the function g. In this question, the functions k has been given, which is the inner one. And we want to find function g, which is the outer functions. So to find the outer functions, which is the g, we're going to substitute the inverse functions of k into the composite functions gk. So first, let us find the inverse functions of k. So let k of x equal to y, then the inverse functions k of y will equal to x. So here, p over x minus 2, this is equal to y. To find the inverse, we're going to let the x to become the subject. So p is equal to x minus 2 times y. So next, I'm going to move the y to the other side. So x minus 2 is equal to p over y. Then x is equal to p over y plus 2. Then we can substitute the x here with inverse k. Then the inverse k of x is equal to p of x plus 2. The x cannot be equal to 0. So now to find the g, we're going to substitute p over x plus 2 into the x in our 
composite functions gk. So for the numerator part, first we're going to expand this, then we're going to get 5p over x plus 10 minus 8. And for the denominator part, this positive 2 minus 2 can be cancelled. So just left with p over x. So next, for the numerator part, we're going to get 5p over x plus 2. And I'm going to write this as divide by p over x. This is also equal to 5p over x plus 2 times x over p. So next, we're going to expand this. So when 5p over x times x over p, so the x here will be cancelled as well as the p here. So just left with number 5. And when number 2 times x over p, then we're going to get 2x over p. And that will be the functions g. Questions number 2. Hence, state the value of g of p. So for questions number 2, p is the input. Therefore, g of p is equal to 5 plus 2p over p. So the p here can be simplified, therefore 5 plus 2, then g of p is equal to 7.